Hi guys! So I've just been asked to do a video talking about the pop culture stuff that I've got around my place. So uh, I guess there was a little bit of interest in it, so I'm going to do a wacky handheld video here. Forgive my lack of uh, cinematography skills here. So uh, we're going to take a look at everything, and uh, if any of you are interested, uh, let's take a journey, shall we? So uh, the focus is going to be kind of weird while I'm filming this, but uh, in case anyone is interested, this is what my shooting room looks like. This is uh, what's going on. Uh, this was an old prop thing. I just haven't got rid of this uh, telephone thing. But uh, this is what my shooting room looks like uh, outside of what you see on camera here. This is my shelf where I keep uh, videos that I'm going to review or that I have reviewed. I keep the ones that I have reviewed up here and various other uh, knickknacks for filming things down there. Um, I got lots of questions about the decorations that I have in here. Um, they're from different places. Uh, this owl thing I just ordered off of Amazon because I, I just thought it was a funny horror type thing. Um, I've got this uh, skull here that was a werewolf skull uh, or a dog skull of some sort from Target. It was a Halloween decoration. Um, I don't know, I just like horror or kind of weird stuff, so decided to include that. And it helps keep the uh, tapes in as well. Um, the stuff on the wall, these concession things, the ones that say like drinks, popcorn, hot dogs, those were off of Amazon as well. I just wanted something, you know, kind of movie themed to not have just a blank wall behind me. Uh, that's where I got those. Uh, drinks, popcorn, hot dogs, candy. Uh, the werewolf diner one was also, well, no, that was from eBay, I think. Um, and again, that was just because I, I love werewolves and I love horror, so uh, that's why I got that. Um, Let's All Go to the Lobby was from uh, Ed and Megan, who are uh, friends of mine. You might remember Ed Glazer from Ninja the Mission Force. You might be hearing some screaming children as well. Uh, that's something I gotta deal with when I'm filming. Um, this VHS tape here was a painting that I made. I didn't buy it, I made this. And I am by no means uh, an artist. I just uh, wanted to have something unique to me that uh, I didn't get from anywhere else. And I, I love that kind of Saved by the Bell aesthetic. So that's what I was going for with this. And uh, hopefully soon, you guys will be able to get prints of this if you want to have it in your own place because uh, I've gotten some questions about that and I figured why not. So uh, I'm trying to set up something with that. So let's move on uh, into the next room. Drink it all in, folks. I know it's going to be slightly blurry. I've got autofocus on here, but um, blown out from the window there. But uh, this is my apartment. This is my lazy cat sleeping on the couch here, wondering what I'm doing. She's sleeping on my VHS pillow. Uh, and I'm, I don't want to move her from there, but it says uh, the movie is night on the couch. Hilarious. Hi, Ash. She didn't know what I'm doing. Um, and I also got a Ninja Turtles uh, pillow there. Some candy that I keep around. I got a lot of posters. That's my phone going off. I got a lot of posters. Um, for different movies that I like. I got Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. Evil Dead 2 is my favorite movie. Poster for The Disaster Artist. That's the book uh, Greg Sestero wrote about his experience with The Room and uh, Tommy Wiseau. He sent me this poster, actually. He, uh, he, was, uh, he, he sent me a message saying that he enjoyed the, re the, re the review of The Room that I did and uh, credited me and Doug for kind of helping get the movie out there, which I, I think was probably a little generous. But um, anyway, he sent me this for free and he was totally cool on Facebook. Uh, really nice guy. Uh, these things here are uh, my She-Wolf of London collection, or part of it, uh, which is my f second favorite show. It was my favorite for a while, but uh, Quantum Leap took over. Anyway, this was a poster from... Uh, Shoot, I don't remember what magazine it is. I, I want to say Starlog or Fangoria or something. I don't know. But this is the She-Wolf of London, Love and Curses Werewolf, the, the shitty one. But uh, it's the only poster that's available, and uh, I wanted to have it on my wall. So I framed that really badly uh, with just whatever generic frame fits. I'm not going to get a custom job for this. Um, and these are... 
She Wolf of London, She Wolf of London slides and newspaper clippings that I got online. This was a press kit for it, uh, is what they said, um, with some e early concept art for She Wolf of London in the middle there, some listings for episodes that aired, and then slides for with promotional photos, which I have scanned and on a, a personal blog of mine. Uh, so I decided to frame them up there and be a big fat nerd. This would be my random tie poster wall, I guess. Uh, this crazy Evil Dead 2 tie poster that I have here with things that don't happen in the movie, like decapitated ash here. Uh, I apologize if any of you guys are squeamish, the gore here. Um, I do have some kind of gory things in here, I suppose. This is probably the worst of it. Uh, this was a gift from Phelan. This is uh, an original copy of uh, a poster from, from back then, so uh, pretty darn cool. I also have uh, a tie poster for The Hidden Two with Kate Hodge, which uh, I just think is great. The movie is not particularly great. It's funny, but uh, not a good movie. But uh, yeah, I like this poster. Kate Hodge is always awesome. So, Battle of the Bands with the Ninja Turtles. I've also got a poster for Evil Dead the Musical. This is when I went to see it in Phoenix. It was a really cool production, and that was the first time, uh, I think, in Arizona that they'd had it? At least in Phoenix it was the first time they'd, they'd had Evil Dead the Musical, and uh, it was a really funny production. Uh, if any of you guys haven't seen Evil Dead the Musical, you should, because it's a riot. Professional video maker. You know, I never get texts at all except for when I'm doing this, apparently. So we've got uh, a Friday the 13th poster that was from uh, the, the remake. This was a free thing I got when I worked at a movie theater back when it came out, so this should show you how long ago it's been since I worked at a theater, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I like the look of it. I mean, it might as well be for one of the old ones, because it's not anything distinctive, which is kind of what the remake was like anyway. So, uh, yeah. I've also got this poster of Gabrielle from Xena. This was at an old comic shop, uh, when I lived in Arizona. I got that from there. And that was the only Xena poster they had, so uh, that's what I end up getting. Uh, also, I have one for the Lost Boys. I also have a poster of uh, Ninja the Mission Force, the season two, the one that I was in. Look, there's a big poster of me on the wall. Uh, I promise I'm not that vain. It was just, it was really cool. Um, and this was something that uh, Ed gave me for free, you know, since I was in the movie and uh, pretty freaking sweet. Uh, I don't know if these are available on this, uh, probably on the Ninja the Mission Force site. I don't know, if you guys are interested in one, it's, there's probably prints available, so uh, you could check it out there. Uh, Neonharbor.com, I believe NinjaTheMissionForce.com is also registered under them. You got sweet stuff like pirates on horses on trains. Or maybe it's cowboys on horses on trains and then pirates on a, on a ship here. I promise I know what's in this. A dragon, yeah, all cool. And you got my horrible setup trying to get wires um, worked around from my TV to my computer. Um, I have a nanny doll here. This is a talking nanny doll. Um, but she says things that aren't even really catchphrases of hers on the show. It's very weird. Just, just, there's like just a few things that she says, and it is Fran Drescher. But uh, very strange. That was another gift from Phelan. A lot of these are gifts from Phelan. Um, got a broken picture of the Ninja Turtles there. The owl from uh, Legends of Oz, because this is also talking, by the way. <laughs> Let me see if I, can, if I can get it talking again. I don't remember what I have to squeeze to get it to say something. I don't know if it still works, even. Yeah. For the first time ever, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> I think he also talks about food. Uh, I just thought that was amazing that even existed. Um, the movie is terrible. I also have uh, an autographed picture from Andrews Hove uh, from the Subspecies series. And this was from a very awesome fan who was going to a convention that he was at and offered to get it for me. So uh, yeah, I have an autographed picture from uh, Radu himself. Very cool. I got my uh, Friday the 13th lights here. A lot of these are like... Halloween decorations that I just left up because I, I like creepy stuff, so uh, so sometimes uh, it just becomes part of my everyday decoration. I got my uh, bookshelf here, lots of different uh, 
geeky books, um, lots of comics or old magazines. Um, I got a sonic screwdriver pen there. Uh, most of these are books about bad movies or TV shows. Um, really great stuff there. I only save, I usually only save the ones that I that I really liked reading, or sometimes if I just think that it would look good on the shelf. Let's, let's just be honest. Um, but this is my collection of uh, bad movie show books and cult classics and things like that. Uh, I've also got some uh, Quantum Leap reading there. These are all the Quantum Leap comics in the side here, next to the Quantum Leap book. Um, you'll see a lot of Quantum Leap related things in here because uh, I am obsessed and I have a problem. The comics are very good. I love them. This is my collection of She-Wolf of London Love and Curses um, film strips. I got these uh, just in bulk from a lady off of eBay. Uh, because she was selling um, some other She-Wolf related thing, I think like a promotional photo or something, and just by chance I decided to email her and ask her if she had any other things, and normally I don't ever just email someone and see, say, like ask if they have something that's not in their store, but I just decided to this time and I hit the jackpot because they had tons of behind the scenes photos, um, lots of really cool things that hadn't been unearthed, and uh, I bought them and got a scanner and uh, scanned them and put them up and there was lots of really cool stuff in there. Um, so yeah, I have this giant box of them now underneath my Freddy glove here. And this is some more scanner type stuff. Um, this is a candle skull here. <laughs> He's supposed to bleed when he uh, when you light him up. But it's sort of just a, a kind of pink goo that's not very colorful. Uh, this was something I got from the Peeps store next to um, the Gaylords in uh, Alexandria where they have MAGFest. So I got that from the Peeps store there. I don't remember where I got the Rubik's Cube, maybe for Christmas one year. This is from Spam Gum. This is a, a can of Spam Gum, or Spam Mints, I guess. They didn't taste very good. Um, well, actually, they were more like, just to, like... Pez's that didn't have a lot of flavor. It was a little disappointing, but uh, I like having the tin here. So we got uh, a handful of action figures here. Once this focuses, yes, good. Um, firstly, I've got my uh, Tardis piggy bank here, where I just put change in. I've also got a little Jelly Belly tin that had the popcorn flavored Jelly Bellies in it uh, that I got from the Jelly Belly factory in California. And uh, that is the best flavor, so I will fight you if you don't think that the popcorn Jelly Bellies are delicious. Um, I've also got a little USB that's Freddy Krueger down there. Um, a severed finger pen. <laughs> um, some Evil Dead 2 figures. I've got two Henriettas. Um, because I already had one, and then, uh, I don't know, for Christmas one year, one of my uh, family members, my brother, he sent me another one, and I already had it, so I decided to take it out of the package and just set it up with the long neck. <laughs> uh, I've also got two Radu figures. Uh, it might be surprising to some of you, but there were Radu action figures from subspecies. And uh, there's actually another variant that I don't have, but uh, I don't feel like I need to collect all that. I think two is probably a good amount. Um, but uh, this one's really cool, this uh, green one here because it's a, a Japanese exclusive variant called Radu in the Forest. Radu in the Forest, because he's green and has slightly reddish hair. Because Th that's what Radu did when he was in the forest. He, he wore a green outfit, right? That's what he did? I don't know. Each of them have their own little subspecies with them and a bloodstone. Uh, and this one glows in the dark, so that's pretty darn cool. I've got a box for The Hidden Two, which is actually not an actual uh, tape box. This was from that sci-fi guy. He wanted to make a prop for a, a joke for a cameo that I was doing, I think, and I, I don't remember what video it was from, but uh, he did that. He asked me what poster I should use for it or whatever, and uh, it was that one. He did like a, a fake quote at the top there. Uh, Riveting, exciting, a wild ride from Sean Edwards, Fox TV, who is apparently a very hack critic, from what I've heard. Um, 
<laughs> so uh, he gave this to me, I think, at MAGFest because uh, he just, you know, he didn't have any other use for the prop, so he gave it to me. I've also got a promotional photo from The Hidden Two with Kate Hodge and Raphael Sabarge. Um, I just really love Kate Hodge. It seems like I just love The Hidden Two, but it's just, it's just Kate Hodge and whatever was available, and she doesn't have a lot of, air quotes, merchandise. This is my signed, one of my signed Kate Hodge autographs here, uh, which was the, the same fan that got me the Radu one from Anders Hove, got me this one. And this is signed directly to me. It says, for Allison, many thanks for all your support, Kate Hodge. And this is actually a photo from She Wolf of London. Uh, and next to that is one from Neil Dixon. Uh, it just says, good luck. And that one was a gift from someone else. And so I, that's what I have from him. This is a VHS of Evil Dead 2, a collector's edition, which spells Necronomicon wrong on the back, and what I thought was really funny. See, look at that, in bold there, Necromomicon. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, and behind that, I have uh, an Army of Darkness S-Smart Ash figure. There you go, uh, yeah. So uh, for those of you who are watching, that perhaps know me in person. I don't need any more Evil Dead figures. I'm good. I got, I got, I'm good. I've also got a Doctor Who clock up here that's got all the doctors for the different times, which is actually not working currently because I haven't changed the batteries for it, but uh, there you go. Uh, some of these Doctor Who things are just remnants from when I was a bigger fan of the show. I've, I've fallen out of love with it, but uh, I didn't want to get rid of this stuff, so. All right, so up here I've got another Kate Hodge autograph, which was, I believe, a, a, a gift along with that uh, Neil Dixon one. And it's addressed to someone named Scott. And I, do, I don't know who it is, but it's a hilarious old picture of her from when she was young, and uh, I like having that. I've also got a Wolfman action figure, which was from uh, Ed and Megan from, it was for Christmas, I think, uh, along with a little Wolfman figure from Target that was another Halloween decoration. Uh, an autograph from Cynthia Rothrock that is directly addressed to me. I think it says, best of luck with the reviews. Um, a little salacious crumb beanie baby. Uh, and another signed Cynthia Rothrock uh, poster for Honor and Glory, which is just her name, not anything specifically uh, personalized. Uh, I got all my CDs here. I've also got uh, the Psy CD with Gangnam Style. Uh, there's also a little puppet of me that someone made of me, and a uh, featherweight, and uh, he, uh, he gave it to me, so I got a little puppet of myself. Uh, we got my movie shelf here. This is where I keep stuff that's generally just um, not really review stuff, it's just things that I own. Some of them are movies that I've reviewed in the past that I just stuck on my shelf. Um, I save most of them. Um, lots of TV shows, things like that. My huge section that takes up Baywatch. <laughs> Uh, which I guess I, I do review those, but um, I don't need to have those in my shooting room. Just keep them on the shelf in here. Speaking of which, uh, my Baywatch dolls up here. These aren't even all the Baywatch dolls I have. It's so sad. I'm gonna move this light out of the way. Okay, so yeah, these are um, a few of the official Baywatch dolls that they made. We got Mitch Buchanan, uh, Stephanie Holden, and CJ... Uh, she, what is her last name? Parker? Yeah, C.J. Parker, uh, which is uh, Pamela Anderson's character. <laughs> uh, th these are actually, uh, I think, kind of hard to find now. They weren't as mass-produced as... Um, there's some Baywatch Barbies as well, which I have, and I will show you in a bit. Uh, I also have a couple of retro-style Kenner figures for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I also have a little Mugwai here for Gremlins. I think that's a keychain. Might just be a little figure. Um, some of those little pop figures of Willow and Buffy from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and a tiny Dean Winchester and Ash from Evil Dead. I've also got a couple Beanie Babies here. Uh, I used to have a bigger Beanie Baby collection when I was a kid and I got rid of most of them because, you know, like everyone else in the 90s, you grew out of it. But uh, I saved some of my favorites. But they, funny enough, these aren't actually from my original collection. These are ones I got later because I thought they were funny themes. Like, um, the ghost is named Sheets. Um, the Cracker Barrel one I just thought was hilarious, that there's a Cracker Barrel Beanie Baby. Hilarious. Um, the Black Bear is called The End. 
and he's about like the the end of the it's just like the start of the millennium the end of of whatever century that was or whatever like it, i just find it funny it's like apocalyptic beanie baby like that's so dark like, why would that exist i don't know but uh, he's sitting on top of the baywatch trading cards um which were a gift from uh, ed simia from the so bad it's good books which uh were on my shelf back there those are uh so bad it's good one and two. I, I wrote pieces for those, so you guys should check those books out. And uh, Ed's a really funny guy. Uh, I also got a couple of Kool-Aid flavors. Uh, I got the Sharkleberry Finn and Purple Source Rex here. Uh, oh, and I, I have a little um, Tales from the Crypt Vault of Horror. I want to say it's like for money, possibly cigarettes. I don't know. It was. <laughs> it's just kind of cool looking. Um, I've also got these, I guess these aren't pop culture, but uh, they're animal food hybrids. Like there was a bunch of these at this store in Arizona. And uh, this is like a bird and an onion. No, no, okay, it's a pig and an onion and then a bird and a garlic is what it is. Uh, I've also got next to this picture of Ash uh, in a hat, I've got these little clay figures of me and Phelan and me as Radu, which were uh, all from fans. Uh, I believe the these ones are from Riddle Panda, and the company that did this one, which is it's crazy detailed too. I love it. Was uh, these were given to us at conventions? Um, Schlapocalypse, Shy Apocalypse. I apologize for getting the name wrong. Uh, Right, bashdesign.com and I know they've done a bunch of stuff of Lewis's characters as well and uh, they do crazy detailed work very cool stuff uh, and that came in this little box here that I just kept I've also got a little money bank of uh, the Captain uh, not Captain Crunch the Cinnamon Toast Crunch chefs including Wendell himself <laughs> uh, this is my little quantum leap section of this shelf here I've got these old school Quantum Leap pins from the 80s, the, well, I guess from the early 90s when the show was out. Um, these were actually from that time, so they're they're made of metal and they're kind of gunky, but I love them. I've also got a uh, demo tape of the pilot, which was uh, demo tapes are what they gave rental stores to kind of say like, hey, you should buy a bunch of these in bulk, your customers will love them. Um, but it didn't have any kind of pitch at the beginning. I thought maybe, you know, they'd be like, hey, if you like this, you love Quantum Leap. Whoa! But they didn't. It was just uh, the pilot and I think uh, one effect shot was different and uh, it's, it scrolls demo, not for individual sale at the bottom. I could go to jail for this! Uh, I've also got the uh, original soundtrack here, along with a little Gears steampunk looking uh, case here that has nothing inside it. Uh, there's also a little plushie of a star, which was given to me at my very first MAGFest. And I, I'm i sorry, I don't remember the name of, of the girl. She was so sweet. She had pink hair. You guys probably saw her there if you were at MAGFest. Uh, and if she's watching this, sorry. But uh, you, you're very sweet and I always recognize you when I'm there. I'm just terrible with names. Um, okay, so this is my Quantum Leap novel collection. This is all 20 of the novels, uh, including a... Quantum Leap from A to Z book, and uh, there's two copies of Loch Ness Leap because uh, they're just one of the lots happened to include it, and I didn't know it would when I was getting these all. Uh, I've read all of them, and I'm currently editing a video about them, so uh, that'll be out when it's out. This is a collection of soundtrack CDs and old uh, computer games that probably don't work anymore, like uh, Barbie Magic Hairstyler and uh, My Little Pony. Uh, I have those. Uh, tin for the Twilight Zone, a um, bunch of VHS tapes. All these recorded ones are my copies of Big Wolf on Campus, which was my first obsession. And uh, I bought all of these tapes when the show was off the air from someone who was selling them off of like some shady site for like, uh, I think it was ten dollars each. So it was like a hundred forty altogether for all of these. It was ridiculous, but the show's never been released officially, and it was, you know, I loved the show, so I, I wanted to get a copy of it somehow, and that's how I learned how to convert things 
from VHS onto the computer. So uh, that's what I did. I, I copied all of those, and, and probably very badly, but uh, that's what I did to preserve them. Also got a blow-up uh, safety can from Baywatch as well. This is an official Baywatch safety can here. Whoa. I'm an official lifeguard now. So in the corner here, you will see uh, this is just a bunch of videos. This is where I keep ones that I haven't watched yet, but I'm considering for review. Uh, I just sort of, this is how I keep things separate so I can remember what I've watched and what I haven't. And this is sort of my corner for that. Um, I've got four different puppets from the Angel episode Smile Time, well, the officially produced ones, not from, not screen used or anything, but uh, these were apparently very expensive, so thank you again to Phelan. Uh, and uh, the variant of Spike is a puppet, which did not happen in the show. And the other ones are like, uh, there's Battle Damage, and then there's Normal Angel, and there's Vampire Angel. Um, got <laughs> plushes from Food Fight. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember if, if I bought those or Phelan just left them here. I don't know. I don't know who owned those ones, actually. <laughs> uh, a chakram. This is actually made of, of metal here. Like, this is actually like a, a custom-made job. They didn't actually sell um, official uh, chakrams from Xena, so I have that. And it's actually, it's, it's accurate to the screen. Like, if you turn it around, you got the other design there. Uh, a little sharp, but not super sharp. It's not gonna not gonna hurt you unless you're really trying. But uh, <laughs> this isn't in very well. Uh, I also have a bunch of Xena figures here that are kind of like Barbies. Uh, one of these that's in the back there. I don't want to take them all out, but one of these is Ares. You can kind of see them in, the, in between these two. But uh, that's the only action figure of Ares that they released of the Kevin Smith version, because uh, the one for the Hercules show that they did was. Uh, the weird first version that was like some big skull guy or something. So anyway, that was the only version that they ever did, funny enough. And these were like peanuts. Like if you, if you want to get these action figures, they are not expensive at all. And they're really cool, and they're actually designed pretty well. I mean, you know, they look like Barbies, but uh, the Gabrielle one especially looks really accurate. And there's a Kalisto one over here as well. Um. We've got some cereal here. Uh, when Fruit Brute and Fruity Yummy Mummy came out at uh, Target with their retro style uh, covers, I had to get them because I thought that was just super cool. And I also have, they don't have cereal in them anymore, but I also have the Xena A Taste of Honey cereal. <laughs> this was apparently, I, I think, just like a comic store exclusive of just Taste of Honey cereal, but they had a Xena cover of it. Um, just ridiculous. I thought that was hilarious that that ever happened for whatever reason. Um, it, it hasn't been opened, I don't think. There's still cereal inside, but I'm never going to eat it. Uh, that's probably pretty dangerous, but there is cereal in it. Taste of Honey. We've also got the Baywatch Barbie and Ken, which were officially released for Baywatch. Um, yeah, so, I mean, kind of like, you know, Mitch and CJ, but this is Barbie and Ken. And uh, those are things that also existed. <laughs> We've got uh, my collection of board games, which are, uh, again, uh, themed to TV shows. Uh, the Xeno Warrior Princess board game, which is a bunch of bullshit. Um, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer game, one of the games. This was the uh, North American version, because there was another Buffy game. Um, I got the werewolf card game. I got ooh, an autographed picture uh, from Michael Dudikoff. It's telling me to stay strong and keep smiling. Super nice. And that was from, again, that same fan who sent me those those uh, other ones, the Kate Hodge and uh, Anders Hove one. And uh, also got some other card games. Um, what is the this first one called? It was uh, Grave Robbers from Outer Space. Um, which are, you basically are making your own B-movie and using your characters to fight each other. Uh, and there's a bunch of spin-offs of it which are in that collection there. Uh, really fun games. Tough if one person's winning to actually, you know, g get out of that. So it, it's a little bit unbalanced. You might want to tweak the rules on your own to make it a little, uh, a little more fun, a little more of a challenge. But, um, but yeah, interesting uh, idea for it. I've also got uh, Seen It 
which is really fun. Uh, Trivial Pursuit DVD Pop Culture, which is a little more dated than seen it and covers a little more things than movies. That's usually the box top that I use to get Ash to sit in a shot and not run away, is the Trivial Pursuit one. Uh, I've also got the Buffy card game here, which I think I attempted to play once, but I didn't really get it, so I don't know. There's just a bunch of boxes, and the, they're in the standy boxes that they would use uh, when they were selling them in the store. And um, America's Funniest Home Videos uh, VHS game, which I did a video with Phelan and Brad on, which uh, I'm really proud of that video. It was, it was a lot of fun. This is surprisingly replayable game. Like, you could endlessly do this and kind of fill in your own things, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've also got, uh, these are <laughs> copies of DVDs that I have, uh, I ordered this season again because, like, a disc was scratched or whatever, and I, I didn't want to get rid of the other ones in case, I don't know, I scratched another disc, so I've got another Quantum Leap and a, a season of The Nanny in there. Uh, I've also got a pretty fancy puzzle, which is, like, from, like, 1983 or something. Um, play it by ear to the first CD game, the sequel. I have not played that yet, so I, I don't know how it actually uh, is. It's probably not very playable, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I've also got Baywatch the game, which uh, I have not played also. So uh, I believe that was a a UK board game. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm going to play that eventually with uh, Phelan. I've also got the Angel and Buffy board games from the UK. Uh, which the Buffy one is different than the board game from North America. Um, these games are bullshit. Just a bunch of bullshit. Like, they're impossible to play. I do not recommend them at all. They are the least fun you could ever have playing a board game. Absolutely terrible rules. Um, nearly unplayable. Atrocious. <laughs> So yeah, that was my tour. I hope whoever was interested in that uh, had a good time, and uh, I'll be back with a more tightly edited video very shortly. So I'll be seeing you guys around. Bye!